At our breakfast tables, we'd scream while they arranged 12 heads of tangled strands into the shape of perfect ponytails. What would have happened if, God forbid, my hair went a day unbrushed? But our mothers were not ones to reason, and I never fought because the smell of her was worth my daily torture. A gang of 12 girls leaving home every day in our mama's favorite dresses, each sister as fair and wild as the other. In our land full of corners, we always met at the one where handstands were rated from one to 10 and plans to break into the old church were devised in great detail. Live oak strangled by concrete, trees we never did climb, one corner with a green metal sign stating that it was ours. Were the school bus left without us so we'd venture off in our pretty dresses soon to be stained, our kingdom awaited our rebellious reign, our ponytails expecting a slow death throughout the day. In the middle of our jungle, our kingdom of magical smoke and strange creatures, where gold coins were left on the forest ground to be found and saved. Next to the field where fires bloomed in winters, taking turns on the razor scooter only to scrape our knees on the same missing chunk of asphalt every damn time, the one with the building whose only use was to be climbed up our ladder to the top of the world to watch the fireworks and evenings yellowed. While our mamas planned luncheons of finger sandwiches, we girls ran free with black-bottomed feet. We stood breathless on the bridge over the highway and spat at the cars driving underneath. We were 12 dying ponytails, cross-legged on the gum-dotted sidewalk, on the bridge that was not to be crossed, our faded pink panties unafraid of the eyes. We sat this way around our gentle man, telling his stories of the magic dust that made him fly till he got so high he couldn't find his way back home, and still has not. I knew some people lost their minds when they lost their homes, or maybe it was the other way around. Others lost their hearts, some their legs, a few even lost an eye. But he must have had an extra set, for he was gentler than our mothers and wiser than our fathers. The only set of eyes in the world who could watch us Though we were too wild to be kept in sight, the 12 of us, the royal family, reigning over our land of those even wilder. Our mamas told us to be careful. Was it careful of bears or witches or men? But we 12 were the bears and the witches, the men, the menaces. Our mamas told us to be home before dark like evil was afraid of the sun. She couldn't know what went on that day. All we knew was what we could sense, though we didn't yet have the words for them. But little girls know much more than their big-breasted mamas can teach them. They haven't been told, so they only can feel and sense and understand of that that cannot be said. We crossed the train tracks to our magical forest and straddle the branches of the honeysuckle tree beside the creek singing dirty versions of our church choir songs and dreaming of a bridge to the land we could not see. Pain in the night from our legs growing longer, the more ground we could cover and more of our kingdom we conquered while stopping to pee on white picket fences. But one day, we became too powerful. Our breasts were bound and our dirty fingernails covered by white satin gloves, bruised knees hidden by dresses of longer hems. Instead of dowsing rods, we held silver forks, the ones meant for salad, not dessert, young lady. We tried to rebel with our debutante slouch, but were quickly straightened by the wicked witch of the South. We tried to meet at our corner, but couldn't find our way, for our field of fire was just a vacant lot of creatures left cold, our gentle man replaced by a troll hiding under the highway. We learned to read that our green sign belonged actually to 28th Street. We squinted and strained but couldn't see. The honeysuckles didn't come back in the spring. The generations of girls must have drank in them all. No longer were we the rulers of those wilder, ripped from the throne of girlhood, all 12, then just me. 
My old dress is now outgrown, but I still cried when we handed them down to girls shorter than I, still small enough to see worms on the sidewalk. I didn't know why. I found myself again climbing that ladder to the building not as high as I had remembered, not with my sisters, but with a boy who talked about the stars till I was seeing stars and let him take them from me. But in the race towards perfection, I was in first place, not through sprinting nor sweating, but with a smile and grace. I built my picket fence and painted it whiter with the rules I was taught so well to follow. I waved down at the girls who disappointed their mothers, who smiled on front lawns and fought in the back among the weeds, houses painted eggshell to cover dark secrets, houses of cards meant to protect us. I entered a game so easy to play, dumb and harmless, and it was okay, because I was just pretending. I let them call me sweet, and I was handed a smile that trapped me in it. My soft voice melted into silence, and my playing dumb was no longer a game. I'd lost my strength, for I became afraid to seem like a threat. Perfectly planted peonies, carefully tended to by tradition, but I was kept in place by thick vines of fear had been slowly creeping up my legs for years, trapping me in this garden. Because in that world, safety is a trick. A girl is a gun, but locked away too quick. But I'm not the only girl who's dreamed to be free. I know each and every one has this desire with me to run away, not knowing what from, but held back from leaving only by love for their sweet mamas who tried their best to keep them safe in their warm nests. Except I was lucky to have a mother kitty who had escaped once too. She gave me this power, passed through blood, no longer a flower, I crawled out of the mud, and she helped me cut the vines. With my buttons and needles, my cat and my cloak, the runaway bride finally throwing the stones from my pocket so I could run faster, my thumb out for a ride to the farthest place I could reach. I flew over seven seas to a land with a kite-filled sky and boundless ground, not a fence in sight. And then I found a strange maiden sent down to mother the young girls lost, nourishing a garden of dolls into souls, bruised knees and hairy legs, bleeding and laughing, instinctual and wild. She held bugs in her hands. The parts of myself I was taught to hate, they fueled her power. Both Eve and her Adam, the garden and the desert, the snake and the apple, a primal goddess. Her power like a flame spinning webs from her fingers we met in her cave where she broke the spell. The curse of perfection fell from my skin, leaving me bare. Through her crystal ball I could see the 11 other ghosts, now without me, each girl trapped in their cells, starved of their essence. This safety was fatal. They hadn't built it themselves. The goddess disappeared as quickly as she came, but now alone in these woods, I walked less afraid. I came across a wild pack of girls who held handstands with crooked legs and danced in their panties while they made scrambled eggs, read poetry aloud and wrote stories of fish, sang songs in trees, painting blue portraits of themselves. Their skin held the stories of the lands they'd escaped. Seeing again the stars I once knew with our hands we created, built and brewed, we sewed our own dresses not perfect, but ours, that let us sit wide-legged in the grass, and shoes were lost, and it didn't matter, because I didn't have to worry about broken glass. Now, as light slips in through the open French windows, the evening is yellowed once again, my hair falling out of a short-lived ponytail among women who dance to feel like girls again, unescapable mirrors, a box of myself, and I look. I see myself now like she's an old friend, except now 
Her arms are longer, a body that bleeds. She smiles, a different smile. Who isn't graceful when she dances, but quite likes to anyhow. Who feels bitter, better sitting on the ground than a chair. Knees still scarred, dancing with feet still black from where she's walked from. And for the first time, she is beautiful. I take her now as my own, both a girl and a woman, a bear and a witch and a man. She hasn't yet been in love, but can't wait to know how, goes on walks to the fields to talk to the cows. Not yet ready to let go of her girl gang days, but yearning for something she can't quite explain, to be someone who walks unafraid of the night. It's Virginia's desire for something beyond the daily life, to be as wise as the goddess who broke her spell and wild as the girls who once played so well, to free her sisters from their cages in hell. But for now, she is grateful. For her gang of girls, once wild and free, when intuition was the only thing we knew. And for my mama, who's always trusted me, even if everything I said wasn't true. For my legs, which allow me to run but also stand. For finding again the young girl I once was because of the ones who showed me how. For all the dresses I've loved and sewed. For my girlhood, this is an ode.